Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? Hope you are doing well. It's been a little while since uh, I've been making a podcast, uh, just kind of slowing down here from the GIE Expo. Oh my gosh, what a crazy few days it was. I uh, appreciate everybody coming up, saying hello. That, that First off, I mean, it's just, it's really crazy to see how much, you know, YouTube and social media has changed the, the GIE in general. I mean, everybody has a camera, everybody's shooting videos. Um, it, it's pretty cool to see because like when I went, you know, six years ago, I don't know, six, seven years ago, whenever my first GIE was, you know, I took my camera and people were weird about it. People were like, what are you doing? Literally, I would go up to a booth, okay, giving, you know, well, I didn't know at the time, but like, hey, giving these people free exposure, they've already put in all this effort to to go to the GIE Expo, and then I was going to sit there with my camera giving them, you know, free exposure, and they're like, what in the world are you doing? Fast forward to now, 2021, and it's all people are talking about, you know, like, um, I, I, you know, I go into a booth and they're like, Hey man, you shooting a YouTube video? I'm like, yeah, Hey, th- th- you know, this, this, and this, and we, we talk about the products and, and move on. Like we don't even, you know, it, it's not weird anymore. I did have one guy, um, shout out to this guy at the case booth, <laughs> but he did not like the camera. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I, I, we made a joke and I like put the camera in the face. I wasn't even recording and he like, he like, put his hand over my camera. He's like, no, 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 I don't want to be on camera. Get that away from me. Uh, he was a little nervous. Camera shy, it's fine. You know, I'm not I'm not in there to mess with people. I really just wanted to get good video um, of products, but we had been, you know, making a little joke and I thought it would be funny, but I wasn't even recording. He didn't like it. Anyways, um, it, it's really cool to see um, how much social social media has changed just over the years, man, like people's perception of it. It's not, it's not strange anymore. Um, it is to some people, you know, but, um, it's getting more widely accepted in general, but especially in our industry, which is cool. Um, it's not so awkward for me to go and go into like these booths and, and make videos and things like that. Cause man, content, and, and I don't want this to all be about me. I, I want to talk about some things that I really learned from GAE, uh, but I, I just want to say thank you guys. I mean, like the support online has been ridiculous. We got, um, we got over two million views in the last week. The, the show was about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, or whatever. But in the last week, week and a half, we've gotten over two million views on Instagram, and and that's just the videos. And we got over fourteen, fifteen million views on TikTok. Um, it's it's nuts. I don't even know. I don't even know. It's it's insane. It's insane. But I uh, wanted to say thanks. Everybody that came out to me said hello. People were like, I, I probably had I don't know fifty, sixty people say, hey, where the heck have the podcast been? I've lo- I, I like listening to podcasts while I go to like while I'm working. Uh, do more podcasts. So that's 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 my mission. I'm on is do more podcasts because when when you have people come up and say, hey, I really enjoy the podcast, but dude they're no they're not being uploaded it's like it, it was kind of like a shot that i needed like a shot in the in the stomach man it's like come on what are you doing so that's where we're at now crazy show i want to talk about some of my favorite things my, I, had, I had a youtube video up uh yesterday or something um kind of showing some of the cool new mowers the cub cadet what do they call that i don't the, the gps mower that they came out with it worked incredibly well. Like that was the very first mower I used at the show on Wednesday. I, now listen, everything it shows, it's the best of the best of what they've got um, in a display that they have created. So you know, we always have to take that into consideration as well. But I can't believe how well it worked. Um, it, you know, in the fifty feet that I could drive it, but it was pretty crazy. It, it, it's cool because that kind of technology, it's not going to, it's only going to help people's lives. Okay. And, and listen, I know the price and everything like right now is just too, it's, it's, it's not going to happen right now. Okay. And, but I'm just saying for the future, it's cool that, 
you know, we don't even know what's out there that could better our lives and better our employees' lives and be able to be more productive. Um, I don't know. It's cool. That's why I'm excited about things like that. The huge push for battery. I've been like contemplating back and forth. It's weird. It's it's very strange because it seems like companies aren't making a ton of changes and advances in their current models that people are using and loving. And they're spending a ton of time, money, and effort on battery, okay? Um, I, I don't know. I, I really, I don't know. It's like, it, it's, it's weird to me when, and listen, I'm totally not even talking about any company in specific. I'm talking about as a broad range of the industry and the, the, the manufacturers. It, it's weird to me that if a company doesn't have a, a perfect product, and what I mean by that is their cut quality isn't the absolute best of the best. I, listen, I've only used a, a handful of brands of mowers, okay? And I would say there's only a couple that can compete. And you guys know that velocity deck on the Skag is ridiculous. I mean, it, it it's for the grass we have, the the best cut quality that I've found, okay? So if you're not competing on that level, why are you even wasting time on battery, okay? Like, that's, I and listen, I know that's harsh, and it's like, but it's true. Like, why, why not focus on just, we need the best quality product for our customers. We need incredible cut quality and durability. Like, <laughs> I promise, you're gonna get a ton of support from us, from the industry, If you just make freaking amazing products and every year it doesn't have to be like this drastic, hey, everybody move to $40,000 a battery mowers. And I'm not saying people are doing that, but, you know, a ton of the show was battery. Okay. And, and like, all right, this is my last harsh part, but it's like to, it, it almost seems like it was just to please this whole California deal. Uh, you know, they have to be battery in, by 2024. But, like, it's going to take so long. Like, I don't know if if commercial lawn care companies are going to move to battery stuff. I don't, I just, it's not happening for a very long time. So, we need to focus on really good equipment. I don't know. I don't know. I know that's weird. But if if there's a company that's not competing at the cut quality and durability standards of the top manufacturers, like they should be focused on getting on that level before ever focusing on anything else. My two cents. Um, I know, I know, but guys, other things that I learned, um, I learned that we're all going through about the same things. You know, a lot of the talks, you know, the equipment stuff's cool, but the, the, the talks that, that, are at GIE. Like I said, my first GIE I went to, I sat down um, next to a fire pit with a guy that, like the equipment manager of, at the time it was Brinkman, but now they're Brightview. And I mean, they're by like thousands of trucks and, and mowers a year. And he was breaking down how much it costs to run a Skag V-Ride um, or a, a, another stander per hour. And I'm just a guy out there. I'm like, I just want to see cool equipment, make stripes, and and that's it, you know. But it really turned me on to the business side of this industry. So anytime somebody goes to GIE, I say, hey, take, take you know, the morning or the day, uh, first day to just go look at equipment, play around with it. And at night, it's, it's cool. Like we went to the Granger Smith concert at night, but man, we went to the element event um, and and sat around and and got around people that are taking this business seriously. Um, Like, like breaking down numbers. Like, man, the element event was, I think I was there from 5.30 to 9. And we were talking about how to better our businesses. 
um, Stan. He kind of hosted the event. Stan, oh my gosh, the guy, he's so smart, okay? He's been around the block a million times over. Um, so j- just to be around him, I mean, it is enough to make literally the trip. And I know that's crazy, but the Spencers were up there. The Almonds were up there. Uh, the turf teacher was up there. And Mark Bradley, the the owner of LMN, he, he owned a lawn care company. And I, I don't, dude, the numbers, I'm telling you, like multiple, multiple millions of dollars a year. In fact, let me show you, let me share with you something he said at this um, this event. This can blow your mind, okay? So the way he had it, you, you need to know, you need to go to one of these events to learn how he had his company set up. His highest paid employee at his lawn care and landscaping company made 400 in $35,000 a year. Let that sink in. $435,000 a year is what his employee was being paid. That, that everybody's jaws in the room kind of dropped. Okay, there was like, I don't know, 200 people in this room. And, and everybody said, oh, we need to pay attention here. Like, like that's, that's that feeling I get. I, I, I've hung out, I've met Mark um, probably three times. And that's the energy in the room. It's like, <laughs> what? I can't even fathom that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it, it's, it's insane. I think his lowest imp- paid employee, and don't, quote me on it but it was it was impressive like it was he had set up this company in a way that made people want to to work there longer so they could just keep going up the ranks and making more money so there was an incentive for them to stay there was an incentive for them to work harder it's 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 crazy it was super impressive it was I, I think everybody there um, you know, was like, wow. Cause I, I was on stage and then those other people that I, I named, um, so it was cool. Like I'm not, I'm not ever going to say that, you know, listen to me over Mark, but it was, I think it's cool for people to see, you know, different stages in business. And I think that's why they had me up there. Um, cause I, I don't, <laughs> I don't believe I deserve to be <laughs> speaking next to that. Cause it, you know, that, that scale of a business is just so much different than mine, but it's cool. It's cool to be able to hear from different, pe- different levels of a business, you know, cause it's really, it's, it's hard for me to relate with somebody like that. It's good to learn from somebody like that, be inspired by somebody like that, but like, I can't just go hire somebody for $430,000 a year, you know? So what you're going to learn is how to work it up in stages in in 15, 20 years, be at the point where he's at, you know what I'm saying? So it's cool. It's, this isn't all about the element event, but I just wanted to say like GIE, you need to be, you need to be making connections, looking at equipment, and learning and and being around and listen I don't pay for any of the classes and I think the classes would be awesome but there these are all free things and I I leave like in awe like I I, I had a eight hour drive home shout out to the Suttons uh, Josh Sutton drove me back on Friday about seven and a half eight hours and we were all just like, whoa, what what do we do now? I think that's the hardest part about GAE because once you get all this information and this inspiration, and then we came back last, you know, on Friday, and then it rained from Sunday. It was wet all week. It's still super wet. We, we were able to get some yards done yesterday, Saturday. But it's like back to re- back to reality, dude. Like, 
you know, this week's going to be miserable because some of these yards haven't been cut in two weeks and it's super wet and muddy and it's like, it's cold. It's going to be 45 degrees. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's hard to go from super inspiration and and learning everybody's, you know, highlight reels of, of their amazing businesses, you know, and then coming back to my business and it's like the real life things of, it's freaking raining for a whole week straight, and now we're gonna have a a really long, you know, week of long grass and tall grass. Um, so, dude, I take a lot of notes, not at the show, um, but afterwards, like kind of like a, you know, a, a debrief, if you will, you know, like kind of a, what can we do, you know, over this winter when we're we're slowed down a little bit? What can we do and implement next year? And for me, the biggest takeaway I had was I have absolutely no choice but to raise my prices. Mark Bradley said for guys doing landscaping, they're like, how can we ever pay our employees more? Um, And he said, on all of your new estimates, charge 30% higher and see what happens, okay? Before you change your how much you're paying your employees, Start sending out estimates that are 30% higher than what they are now, okay? And and that's how you just have to do it, okay? Because it will solve all that money coming in will solve the other problems of being able to pay people more. Um, so I'm taking that advice and I'm going to raise my prices next year. Um, we've only got a couple more weeks uh, it's going to be November 1st tomorrow. Um, we've only got a few more weeks of, of weekly mowing. It, it's totally pointless to raise my prices right now. Next year, super early, we'll, we'll, we'll send out a, a letter, basically, or, or phone calls, or however. I, I don't know what the best way to do to communicate that with is. Um, maybe shoot me a message if you guys have done it before. Like a, like a, This isn't like a $5. It will be like a a significant, we've had significant inflation this year. It's going to be a significant price increase. Um, you know, so it's just, it's what we're going to have to do as an industry, as an industry. Like you, you don't even have a choice anymore. You know, like for the past couple of years, it's been like, Oh, I'll raise my, I don't want to be the, the $35 lawn guy anymore. I'll be the $40 or the $45 lawn guy. Well, now it's like this moment in time, is where there is no more 20 25 30 35 40 dollar lawn guy it's the minimum is 50 you know at least in our area or whatever the minimum the 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 guy that's you know the bottom of the barrel guy price wise would be 50 bucks you know and and it's how it is dude if overall inflation has went up 30% you know I'm just saying, dude, like it only makes sense. Like it wouldn't make sense for, for us to eat all of that. It just doesn't make sense. You cannot do it. Your business will not sustain. Okay. Price increases have happened forever and ever with every successful company. Look at Disney world. (laughs) I saw a chart the other day and it was showing like these major brands Coca-Cola, you know, all the major brands on a graph over the years, like from, I don't know, whatever, 70s or whatever to now. And Disney World has always been like way at the top of the charts as far as price increases because they know if they, if, if their customers demand, I'm kind of a Disney freak, Natalie and I are, we, we got engaged there and we've loved it ever since and. We love our, you know, the kids love it. So whatever. But their customers demand a certain experience, okay? And so to be able to provide that, they need to pay people appropriately. They need to have their, you know, their parks clean, maintained, and improved to a certain standard. So you're going to pay the price for that. Like some... Somebody has to pay the price, and it's the consumer. In in every industry, in every situation, 
if you want a certain quality, then you have to pay for it. Okay, so that's it. Like that's that's just it. And that's what I learned is that that's what people are doing. That's what the successful people in this industry are doing. They're not thinking about it for a year or two, seeing that the profit is way down. They're not, they don't have any money in the winter time or whatever. And, and those bills keep coming and coming and coming. Don't wait for that to happen. Don't, don't drive your business into a ditch because you're too scared to raise your prices. And listen, I'm, in, I'm talking to myself right here because it's kind of freaky. I, I treat my customers and I, I feel like we have really good relationships and they're they're kind of like friends, you know, like just honestly, that's that's how I am with people. Um, I don't I don't take things too seriously. I take our service that we provide super seriously and my connection with my customers super seriously. But I want to be I'm I'm friends with people, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know how to, else to explain it. Like a professional friendship is is what I would call it. Um, so it's kind of you know. I don't. I never want to come off as I'm being greedy, because I'm not. My expenses are up, baby. Like they're going up, and we haven't even touched your price. You know what I'm saying? So, you will pay more at the pump. You'll pay more every. Go across the board. You're paying more. Um, other things from GIE. Uh, going back to some equipment things. Um, you know, not, not ton of like as far as mowers go there wasn't anything that really stuck out to be revolutionary um if that makes sense like i said the push for battery was insane uh they they did have some some cool robot mowers but you know like that husqvarna husqvarna has the coolest i think little robot display but it's been they've had that for the whole every GIE I've ever been to so six seven years um and it hasn't changed and and honestly I've never seen one um out in the world working so I have reached out me emailing um you know, some of these, these robot companies and said, let me get my hands on one, man. I want to see this thing work for a season. And I have never once had a company even entertain the thought of it. So that's always like a little, (laughs) if you wanted reassurance that robots aren't coming to take your jobs, that should be it. Okay. For a long, long time, I cannot I can't get one to to even entertain the thought of sending one out for me to videotape for a season. Okay. So I don't know. Maybe they work good, but it, that to me says that they, they're just not there yet. They work great on displays. Um, I mean, I'm not, I don't mean to call out Husqvarna, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Send one of those things out to me. I'll try it for a season. We'll film it all on YouTube. But, like, I, I would never buy one if I've never seen one out working. Never. Ne- not one time. I've never, I, I don't, I've never seen a robot mower in my area. Um, I don't know. I, I heard that, like, an art museum downtown has one the nelson uh, nelson museum whatever but i've never seen it so robots aren't coming to take over okay the ones i think right stander i I put it on instagram whatever it was like some company made a remote control one but like what's the point you know that's a ton of people were, were talking about the bobcat that i posted too what's the point um, I don't, I don't know the, the Bobcat. The only thing about the remote control thing that people were saying was maybe in dangerous, you know, on the side of highways, um, you know, whoever was operating that machine could be in a safe area and the Bobcat, you could control it if it was just in an unsafe 
And that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. The spider mowers doing incredible inclines goes up to 60% or 60 degree. That makes 100% sense. Okay. And those things are selling for cities and municipalities and things like that. Selling like crazy. But as far as like the little like robot mowers, it's just, it's cool display. Um, but there's just nothing that like really, I don't know. I, I will say this. I will say this. We'll, we'll, we'll expand out a little bit as far as other equipment that I saw. Um, Mulchmate, okay, is Dawson Manufacturing. That's like their company name, okay? Mulchmate, you've seen them for the past couple of years, like crazy cool product. Um, they also have a couple other cart mates. They came out with a snow plow, okay? They call it Snowmate. I think it's like $900 or $1,000 or something. It's a snowplow that attaches to any any mower. I, he had it on a stand-on mower, but I don't know why it wouldn't. I think it can go on any zero turn or anything. Um, I think it would go on a zero turn, a stand-on. I don't see why, why it wouldn't. Um, 900 bucks. I think it's killer. I, I, I think it's incredible. I, I talked to him a couple days ago. We are going to set up a discount code, BB10, okay? It's not, I don't think it's live yet, but we're working on it here in a couple weeks if you guys are interested um, in, in picking one of those up or, or anything um, from Dawson Manufacturing. We will have a discount code, super cool, pumped about that, but there's not really, I, I haven't seen or heard of anybody making a snow, excuse me, a snow plow that is that reasonably priced. Um, so I think that's huge for you to be able to get into um, sidewalk. You know, companies subcontracts, subcontract snow work like crazy, but you can get just sidewalk jobs, okay? So for $1,000, you could be a subcontractor for snow accounts. You could do driveways, sidewalks. It's huge, like... It's a great money making opportunity. I think you could make literally ten to twenty thousand dollars with that snow plow if you guys get some good snow. Um, I don't think you could do huge snow, but if you get you know up to four or five inches, you know pretty regularly in the in the winter time, you're going to be able to make some good money. Keep that money rolling in with a freaking lawnmower that you already have. Genius. Freaking genius. That's all I can say. Uh, another cool thing that I saw was from Stinger. They have, I've never drop seeded in my life. We always just use a, a spreader, like a broadcast spreader to spread seed when we aerate. So they have an aerator, okay, a new stand on aerator. You put the seed in, it comes up with this calculation, okay? So you just aerate the yard and it drops seed. <laughs> right in the holes as you're aerating. You're never blowing off the sidewalks, the driveway, getting it in the mulch beds. It, it you, you freaking get to the end. You lift up the times. It stops seeding. You turn around and you put the times back down. It starts seeding again. Freaking genius. Here's why. Listen, you're not like, okay, here's my setup net. I aerate. I get my little, my little push spreader. I fill it up, I go out, I do this thing, um, so I, I've went over the yard twice now, okay, I've aerated it, then seeded it, and then I go off and blow the sidewalks, okay, so some people go, oh, well, I'll just have another guy with me, I'll aerate, then he can seed the front, and then I'll aerate the back, and he can seed the back, and then somebody will blow it off, okay, but like, you're not really getting, you're not... You're gaining some time there, but you're also paying another person to be on that property. Like it only, if it works great, it only makes sense to me to just have one unit. You just aerate as it's seeding and then you go, you're done. One person does two people's jobs and people that are, you know, slick, people that, you know, whatever, hire another person, but it's genius, genius, um, I really do, I, I, I'm, 
I, I need a stand on aerator. That's a genius invention. It takes away needing to spread, needing to blow off. Genius. Um, other than that, guys, uh, <clears throat> check out the video. Whoa, whoa. What was that? Check out the videos, um, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. There was lots of cool equipment there. Um, huge push for battery, though, man. It's very weird to see. I, I, I really couldn't believe it. We'll see where it goes. Like, It's easy to hate on it. It's easy to be hard on it because it's so new. It's so expensive. It's just untouched land, okay? It's just, it, it's untouched We'll see where it goes. It's not going to happen next year, in my opinion. In my opinion. Not going to happen next year or five or ten years down the road. But, you know, one day where they can have a battery that lasts, I don't know, if Apple can't figure it out in a little iPhone, <laughs> you know, my battery's dead in a couple hours. But, you know, as technology gets better and, and batteries, and we'll see where it goes, man. Like, I, I really do, I think there's some things that you can do with a battery like if it would last two days or whatever and, and charge off a solar panel on the trailer and we never have to worry about plug it in in or it dying on us, doing maintenance to it, but it also had a GPS in there and anti-theft, you know, whatever. Like things like that, you're like, hmm, that would be kind of awesome if it gets to a place where it's the same price of a gas, you know, mower. There's less maintenance. We never have to worry about doing anything to it, going to a gas station, nothing. You know, then this conversation, you know, becomes a, a little bit cooler. You know what I'm saying? But right now it's just, you know, so easy to to hate on because it's just untouchable for us lawn care companies because it's just so expensive. Um, and, and the battery, I think, I think the Toro... Um, stand on the battery stand on i think they call it the revolution they're saying that it has like an eight hour battery life don't quote me on that but something around there you know which is like you know pretty good but we cut more than eight hours some days so it's like we just need we need more time we need more technology to to improve uh to get us there so you know we'll see where it goes for for now um you know i i i we just need the best of the best cut quality and really durable equipment. And we're, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. GIU was crazy. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram, uh, at BB Lawn Care KC. Looking for some topics here for, for podcasts. Let me know if you guys like them. Um, I'll keep doing them. Uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things, you know, life, life gets busy, but, it's cool to see that people enjoy them. Um, and that that's what really motivated me. So shoot shoot me some DMs, man. Um, that that encouragement and, and maybe a, a little bit of some questions or some topics to talk about would help me out a lot too. Uh, but that's it. GIE, always crazy, always amazing. Listen, there were so many products there and so many cool things. Um you know, I can't talk about them all here, but I am have I, I did shoot a ton of videos. They're up on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, um, and that's about it, guys. So, hope you enjoyed the podcast. We're gonna keep doing them, and uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the B and B Lawn Care Podcast. We hope you got some golden nuggets that you can implement into your lawn and landscaping business. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure and leave us a five star review. Connect with us on all social media platforms by searching at BB Lawn Care KC. Keep grinding, keep striping, and stay positive out there, friends. 